Safety Media offers live streaming, videography, and photography services for all teams and individuals of all ages. In business since 2010, we are the trusted source when it comes to sports media coverage. If you have a big game that needs to be filmed or live streamed, or an athlete in need of action photography, reach out today and save 15% when you mention this ad. Contact us at 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. From Ed Walsh Field at Manhasset High School, the Varsity Media Sports Network presents this battle of reigning New York State champions as the Seahawks of Cold Spring Harbor come to town to take on the Indians of Manhasset. Good evening, everyone. Dylan Butler alongside Rob Pinnell, our entire Varsity Media crew with you and excited to bring this one to you. A year ago, it was a one goal win courtesy of those guys in red and uh, a lot has changed this year for cold spring harbor some different personnel uh, you don't quite have uh, that significance as you do at the face-off facts i wouldn't say dominance but uh, hawkinson a year ago max hawkinson was very good at that position uh, so they're still trying to figure things out and rob it's a thing too where you know they're five and three right now that's okay but at cold spring harbor it's it's you know it's not right and and that's one of the things that Dennis Bond has been telling his guys like don't worry about the legacy of undefeated seasons and one loss seasons and two loss seasons like just play your game play free and easy but you know the the rich history weighs a little bit on these guys the standard of excellence at Cold Spring Harbor is very high it's a tradition rich program that's have had a ton of success over the years this year they battled with injury and quite frankly they have won five games, but a lot of those wins have been very close as well. So not their traditional start to the season, but a lot of time left, and this is certainly an opportunity for them to set the tone for the rest of the season against a, a very good Manhasset team. At Cold Spring Harbor, the reigning New York State Class D champions, and uh, again, five New York State titles, five Long Island championships, 13 Nassau titles. So that's a little bit of what these current Seahawks are dealing with. Uh, two guys that they'll look to... Uh, Maybe right the ship and get another win over Manhasset. It's C.J. Riley and Caden O'Connor on defense. C.J. C.J. Riley's a guy, Rob, who we're used to seeing in the midfield, but because of the injury to Hayden Calabretta, the Michigan-bound Riley's got to step up and uh, play the attack role. As you see, numbers-wise, he's done a great job this year with 15 and 8. Uh, but obviously, he's also the focal point of the other team's best pull. Yeah, they put a lot of pressure on CJ to produce for this offense. Obviously, pretty balanced stat-wise, 15 goals, 8 assists. Um, not just a goal scorer, not just a feeder. So look for Cold Spring Harbor to initiate a lot with him tonight. Um, but they're going to need him to get hot, and they're going to need him to not only create for himself, but for others around him. And we mentioned O'Connor as well, a guy last year split time with Theo Torres at long stick midi, but now he's one of the leaders of that close D line for uh, a team that prides itself on its defense for sure, Cold Spring Harbor. For Manhasset, it has been perfect to date. They are 6-0 and on the season, and it's a little bit almost, I don't, I don't know, I haven't, I haven't asked Keith Cromwell about this or any of the guys, but it almost has that revenge tour feel, right? A year ago, yes, you did win the C title in New York State, but you had four losses to Darien, to Garden City, to Cold Spring Harbor, and to Chaminade. Well, thus far, here, they beat up Darian, Darian pretty good. Obviously, Woodstick is still ahead, but now you have a chance to, to kind of avenge one of those other losses here tonight. Yeah, it's not like those are bad losses, right? Those are four extremely talented teams, and Manhasset checked one off the schedule this year in beating Darian and doing it so in a dominant fashion. 
and they look to get the second of those four tonight against Cold Spring Harbor. I think they're a very different team this year. I think they've got some guys that have stepped up and into some certain roles, and obviously Cal Girard leading the way at the faceoff X. Yeah, Manhasset beat Darian 11-2. to Most recently, Mercer Island from Washington came to town, and they won that one 12-5. Two guys to keep an eye out for tonight for Manhasset. Aiden Haggerty, so great to see him back. He's bound for Villanova just like his older brother was and uh, missed last year with an ACL injury, has battled his way back. His numbers balanced as well as part of a very good and dangerous and diverse attack line. But Haggerty, 10 and 6, also a five ground balls. He's that kind of leader as well when they start riding. He's the guy to, to kind of cr create some havoc. And uh, Jack Mulholland on the other side, Dartmouth commit. You see his numbers as well, eight ground balls, four caused turnovers. Uh, part of Manhasset's three jack close D of LaMarca, Mulholland, and Morrison. And there you see Haggerty getting ready to get things started with his boys. Brother Brendan was uh, class of 17 played at Villanova. Let's take a look at the starting lineups first for the visitors from Cold Spring Harbor unchanged from their loss to Port Washington. And up front, it's Riley and Riley, the law firm, along with Matt Donaldson. In the midfield, Sammy Bruno, Alex Bauer, and Ryan McGloin. They're close to you again. O'Connor, O'Grady, and Pisano. For head coach, Dennis Bond. What a storied history for the head coach. There he is, 24th season, a 1984 graduate of Sawanica High School. Talk about uh, a lineage and, 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 and guys to just learn from, right? The coaching tree he's uh, coached with and, and learned from Tom Flatley, Doc Darty as well, uh, Donowski, he, George Powers, he's been around them all, uh, and Bond, a terrific head coach, assistant coaches, Christian Lynch and Paul McDermott. For, oh, in cage, excuse me, there he is, Carson Kircher. And again, in a situation where they're giving up a lot of possessions to the opposition, uh, Kirshner has been a real bright spot in that cage. Uh, he stepped in for a guy who's also currently playing collegiate lacrosse in Spencer Will, but you see a 59% save percentage bound for Scranton is number 23, the senior Carson Kirshner. Now let's take a look at the Indians of Manhasset. In a similar situation, when things are going well, why change it, right? Liam Connor, Aiden Haggerty, and Danny Colon up front. Your first midfield line of Jack Peterson, Matt Gargiulo, and Mike Mondiello. We'll see a lot of Luca Petroselli mixing in there as well. And there are your three Jacks. It's good to have three Jacks in the hand, right? LaMarca, Mulholland, and Morrison. For head coach Keith Cromwell, seventh season at the helm, a 1997 graduate of Hicksville, where he was a Nassau champion, went on to Rutgers, was the all-time points and goals leader a three-time all-American for the Scarlet Knights. And in the cage for Manhasset, he also has had a terrific season. It's Matt M, the junior. Look at that, 70% save percentage. He's not faced a lot of shots, but the ones that he has faced, he's made those saves. He has been tremendous this year in his first full season as the Manhasset goalie. It is Cold Spring Harbor. It is Manhasset. And it's all right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. Now is the time to order a college recruiting video with Varsity Media. College recruiting videos can save thousands of dollars on college tuition and help land a spot on the team. Our videos include your best plays set to music with spot shadowing effects to help you stand out from the competition. Contact Varsity Media today and mention this ad to save 15%. Call 516-403-2050 or email jeff at varsitymedia.net. Varsity Media offers live sportscasts for any event. Our productions include announcers, multiple camera angles, graphics, instant replay, and so much more. Hankinson getting it back. Hankinson going in, dropping it back. The shot of the goal! That's it! That's it! Norton! Norton! Pittsburgh! The Class 8 Champions! 
If you want to enhance your events or make the experience better for your viewers, reach out to Varsity Media today and learn more about our live sportscast. Contact Varsity Media at 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. Are you a local business looking to advertise? Well, Varsity Media is the perfect place for you. We offer affordable rates both inside our live stream broadcast and through our social media channels. With coverage all over Long Island targeting the 16 to 54 demographic, why not take advantage and advertise today? For pricing and inventory availability, contact us today at 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. Welcome back to Ed Walsh Field here at Manhasset. Dylan Butler, Rob Pinnell with you as Cold Spring Harbor Manhasset just about set to go. Let's take a look at the keys that both head coaches told us about for Cold Spring Harbor. It's about controlling Manhasset's transition game, and they want to make it a slow game, right? They want to get long, effective possessions when they do get the ball and, of course, also handle the pressure that Manhasset's going to deliver on the defensive end. On the opposite side, hey, Cromwell wants to go and, and push the tempo, right? Go NASCAR a little bit. You want to have effective offensive possessions, high percentage shots, and be prepared for the different wrinkles that a veteran and excellent head coach and Dennis Bond will bring you on the offensive and defensive sides. Coach Cromwell knows that Manhattan's probably going to win the faceoff, so they can afford to take some risk when it comes to pushing the ball in transition, playing fast on offense. You look at Cold Spring Harbor and Coach Bond, he knows he wants to have longer offensive possessions to keep the ball away from Manhattan's offense, knowing that if a goal is scored, Manhasset most likely is going to be getting possession. So taking the air out of the ball a little bit, slowing it down, giving their defense a rest, and um, trying to compete and stay in this game that way. And one thing that we did see from Cold Spring Harbor this year, and maybe they hope to replicate that here tonight, is opening game of the season under the lights against Huntington. Anthony Nunziata going to Yale won every faceoff, right? 16 for 16, but it was Cold Spring Harbor. That found the way, right? And, and again, uh, it, it's about even creating your turnovers off of even after losing the faceoff and, and mixing things up in the, in the diff different zones. But, yeah, they lost every faceoff, and usually that's a recipe for, for disaster. But uh, they ended up winning that one 8-7. When you're losing faceoffs, you have to make up it for it in other ways. In the middle of the field, you have to be really sharp in your stick work create turnovers, hustle on the ride, be sharp in the clear. So those are all things that Cold Spring Harbor is going to have to do tonight to win this game. All right, handshake between the guys. Both goalies go to their cages, and we're ready for the faceoff effects. And we're going to see a multiple look here. And already, actually, we thought it would be Bryce Kipnis at the faceoff effects, but they're going. But they're going to go uh, pole. But look at Cal Girard's numbers on the year. That is insanity. 87% on the season. What they could probably look to do here with Caden O'Connor is for him to pick it up and then to stay on top of him and, and give him some pressure. But just like that, easy win for Cal Girard and Manhattan's on offense. And he's done a great job of going that way as well this season, going backwards, uh, utilizing some help there as well. But um, he has been spectacular. Bound for Duke, one of two returning All-Americans on the island, Tyler McCarthy out of Connequat, who's going to go to Syracuse, the other. So first look now at Manhasset on offense. And there's Liam Connor pushing it back out. Looks like Colson Harbor might be in a little bit of a zone to start here. And we expect multiple looks. Peterson, there's Haggerty back up top. Now Manhasset has seen a lot of different zone looks. Darianne Showed you zone as well here in that big win in the Battle of the Sound. And Hassett definitely has been working in practice on the zone, preparing for it, knowing that teams are probably going to go to it more against them with their talent, uh, especially teams that can't cover them one-on-one. -on -one. So they're ready for this. Just see if they can be patient enough and move the ball and get the right looks. Haggerty, great skip pass, and uh, that shot blocked by Connor. When you're an offensive player, sometimes going against the zone gets frustrating because you just want to dodge, you want to create offense, you want to draw slides, move it, or try and create a one-on-one -on -one for you. Um, 
but being patient is important. You can still dodge a zone and then move the skip lanes like Colin did right there. He did a good job of pressing goal line extended and found that skip lane to a good shot. Just high to high, easy save. Uh, great save. Yeah, Cardula with the shot. First save for Kirstner, and there's McGloin. Just absolutely harassed, getting it to Sammy Bruno now. Bruno's a guy who's moved up to that first midfield line. Obviously, the injury to Hayden Calabretta, who was your top attackman. Now it's a trickle-down effect. So C.J. Riley was on your first midfield. He's got to move up. And then from your second midfield line, it's Sammy Bruno getting some added minutes. And there he is with the ball, 47. And up top, that's Alex Bauer. And again, we expect a lot of patience here from Cold Spring Harbor. Riley, good first step. Reverses course, gets it to X. Little question mark and shot wide by McGloin. Riley gets hands free, and that's a bouncer. Impressive, Rob, just to even get an opportunity with defenders all over. Did a great job of being consistent there and getting to the top side. Right, wasn't going to take getting pushed back behind. He was going to saw that double team continue to climb up the field, get to that top side, get to his left hand. It was a great scoring opportunity. Here's Bauer working off a pick. Bauer goal line extended. Bauer to the cage. And it's 1-0 Cold Spring Harbor. Great recognition by Bauer here off the pick play. A little miscommunication by Manhasset here. They don't switch, and the defender doesn't get over it. And Bauer sees that he just has green in front of him. And to his credit, he puts on the Jets. As you see, kind of a little miscommunication, no switch. He gets behind him, and he comes in, finishes in front, right, with his feet moving in front of the crease. Puts it back to that near side. Great start for Bauer and the Cold Spring Harbor offense. 11th goal of the year for the sophomore who's already getting some looks from the Ivies and Big Ten and Gerard. Another faceoff win. Manhasset looking to tie things up. Cold Spring Harbor going up by one. They can go up by two, go up by three, right? It allows them to really sit into this zone defense even more when they're playing with the lead. They don't have to get the ball. They can take all the time they want on defense because they are winning. So um, look for them to stay in the zone while they're up. And if they can continue to get the ball on offense and score, uh, it might be a long day for Manhattan on offense. Haggerty swings it. That was Patrick Arnold, seven. Arden now cuts across, trying to create some space. Peterson gets it back. Time and space, and Connor again just off. Similar spot that we saw him before. Yeah, you know, you're a shooter, outside shooter, high to high, didn't go on Kirshner the first time. And you got to change planes, high to low. Make the goalie make a save, put the ball on goal. All these young guys want to see that ball go in the top corner as well. It still counts as one if it goes in low as well. And there you go. Getting to the cage was Connor, a little dunk inside, and we are tied at one. See a little play here. Manhasset runs this a lot. They kind of set a screen inside. And he comes off that screen. Connor, you'll see, will come off it, and just a great cut and great finish inside. A little miscommunication by the Cold Spring Harbor defense. Connor, one of the standouts of the Manhasset basketball team, playing like it there, got to the hoop. He's a big boy. Yeah. He's 6'4", 6'5". 15th goal of the year for the Colgate commit. Now it's Sammy Bruno and Gerard. And that's what we said before, a lot of different looks for Gerard today. We expect it to be multiple poles, probably two. Kipnis and Bruno are two guys as well. And there's Connor fresh off scoring the goal. Looks like, 
Cold Spring Harbor might be back into a man offense here. Switching it up a little bit, keeping Manhasset on their toes. Now Cardula looks to dodge from up top. Haggerty, stick checked away. Looks like Pisano got a piece. Now it's a ground ball, war one. Look out, yard sale. And that's what we said, the culture a little bit, right? The defensive culture. Some of the names change, but the mentality is the same for Cold Spring Harbor. A little bit of matchup. Ride, Kirstner. Chased down by Connor. And he gets it across. Raleigh back out to McGloin. He's got PJ Flood, one of two excellent defensive middies for Manhasset. Lapina, the other. Lapina, one of the captains, bound for Boston University. Flood will play as collegiate lacrosse on Hamilton. Swim dodge by Bauer, backs it back up. Bruno, and now Riley at X. Riley tries to get topside, smart move, right? Not forcing things. Little shimmy and a shake. Great defending. And they'll call a push, so it'll stay with Cold Spring Harbor. But Flood really causing havoc. Challenge for Cold Spring Harbor here is going to be to stick to their game plan of being patient on offense with the players being okay to have longer, drawn-out possessions. Because if you do give it back to Manhasset, give them that opportunity to score, right, make it, take it for them. So as the game winds on, Coltsman Harbor is going to get a little antsy maybe on offense. So can they stay disciplined? Can they wait for that great shot and not just take the good shot? Reagan Riley, the younger brother, number five, the lefty, big, physical. And there's Bauer again. Same move. No, not the same result because M comes up with a big save. Bauer took one in the, in the chest or in the head there after he shot. He's down the field. I don't know if it was a late hit or there's no flags on the field. I do think the, ref, the refs may have missed one. He went to the same move before kind of that diagonal run across almost goal line extended. And Dennis Bond not happy about what he also believes to be a missed call. As Bauer gets checked out on the field, we'll take a quick break. 4-11 left first quarter. 1-1 is the score here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for upcoming schedules and content and on social media at Varsity Media. Are you a local business looking to advertise? Well, Varsity Media is the perfect place for you. We offer affordable rates both inside our live stream broadcast and through our social media channels. With coverage all over Long Island targeting the 16 to 54 demographic, why not take advantage and advertise today? For pricing and inventory availability, contact us today at 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. And we're back at Ed Walsh Field. Good hand from the crowd here assembled as Bauer. It's good to see him walk off. He'll continue to get looked at on the sideline. Yellow, 
There's Colin to Connor. Nice quick ball movement. Haggerty, Kirshner the save, the rebound pops out. Mondiello got it. So another opportunity for the Indians. And they, Seahawks take it away. Aggressive ride, first flag is called. Physicality picking up. Saw Cromwell racing up and down. Not happy about the call that was made. Good to see Bauer back in. Again, this is a delayed penalty. And there's Riley. They'll continue to be patient here. Bauer nowhere to go with flood all over him. Here comes Riley. Spins. Riley the other way. Oh, crafty shot by Riley. It makes the save, and now we do get that stoppage. So 32nd foul, so Cold Spring Harbor able to go man up for the first time. Thirty-nine, Roy Testa. There he is, the eighth grader battling for it in front of the cage. Roy Testa is a very tough kid. Although he's in eighth grade, he's on this team for a reason. He's out there for a reason. Very skilled, very tough. <laughs> Look at this. A war. And Manhasset will get possession out of that. So almost all of that man up was that ground ball war in front. No, but you're right about Testa. I mean, what great bloodlines as well. His dad, Brandon, was an All-American at Bethpage when Jim Amon was the head coach, was a captain and All-American at Johns Hopkins as well. His mom played at Hopkins as well. Yeah. Very good lacrosse genes to test the family. Inside the final minute now. First quarter. Arnold. Peterson gets it back. Peterson, that prototypical north-south dodger. There he is. Colin for Max. Bruno thought about it up top. Peterson's bounced back. Oh, look at that. Got his pocket picked. Theo Torres, but it stays with the Indians. And now Peterson, the pass, and that's one that Manhasset wanted back. Cargillo had that shot just as time expired to end a low scoring, but entertaining first quarter.
Alex Bauer says, meet me at the cage. I'm scoring. 1-1, Cold Spring Harbor and Manhasset right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. Now is the time to order a college recruiting video with Varsity Media. College recruiting videos can save thousands of dollars on college tuition and help land a spot on the team. Our videos include your best plays set to music with spot shadowing effects to help you stand out from the competition. Contact Varsity Media today and mention this ad to save 15%. Call 516-403-2050 or email jeff at varsitymedia.net. <clears throat> Welcome back to Ed Walsh Field here at Manhasset. 1-1 one, one the score after one. And special thanks. Today's game brought to you by the Manhasset Lacrosse Parents Association, the MLPA wants to thank the Manhasset Lacrosse community for their continued support and generosity, which makes broadcasts like this possible. Dylan Butler, Rob Pinnell here with you, the entire Varsity Media crew. And opening 12 minutes, you've got to say win for Cold Spring Harbor. Yeah, I think they're executing their game plan to perfection when you look at their keys which would be patient offense and try and slow the game down they're doing just that and switching it up on defense man to man zone they're doing a great job there making it has to really think making them be patient as well making them settle for outside shots that they want to let Kirshner and their goalie see so I think uh, as far as if you're to pick a winner at this point I think Cold Spring Harbor is certainly uh, asserting their game plan more over Manhasset at this point. Both of these schools, girls teams won today. Manhasset girls won, and as did Cold Spring Harbor. Triple overtime win over Wanta. What a win for Cold Spring Harbor. And look at that. So after all that hard work on the face-off X, it's Manhasset who ended up getting it back. They got it back. Yeah. It's Cold Spring Harbor win, though. I gave it to him. Did you? Oh. Right there. <laughs> they finally I got one. Down. We got to give it to him. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got to make sure Cold Spring Harbor can get those wins when they can get them. Here's Cargiulo your first midfield line Peterson, Cargillo, Mondiello again we'll see some Luca Petroselli as well there's Connor pass inside and it feels like anything that's deflected or open Cold Spring wins it how about this pole to pole here comes Pisano what a pass Riley just wide great transition opportunity for Cold Spring Harbor you know sometimes you gotta take advantage of those, especially in it's gonna be a tight defensive game like this. Cold Spring Harbor team that does wanna settle down on offense, when you have an opportunity like that, you gotta take that in transition, and I'm sure Riley would like that one back. It's something that he usually puts in the back of the goal. Yeah, and I felt like it could've been one of those juice goals, right? You get the stop, you get the pole going, quick passing goal. Absolutely. Here's McGloin, 44, football hockey guy as well. Here's Riley with speed, whistle blue first. And it's a crease violation, so we'll go the other way. Great take by Riley there, use of the pick play. Gets to his right hand and finishes with authority, but unfortunate, it's called off there. Look for them to go back to Riley when they get on offense. He looks ready to play right now. There's Connor. Back out to Cargiulo, that big, athletic, bruising type of midfielder. Arnold comes out of the box. Peterson. 
quick ball movement for Manhattan. Nice first step. Haggerty's shot goes low, but Kirshner makes the save. Nice quick move by Haggerty there on the backside. Just Kirshner was there ready for that high to low, right offhand for Haggerty, usually shooting with his left hand. Third save for Kirshner, both goalies with three saves. Here comes Testa. Takes the physicality like a man. <laughs> I love it. But Lapina says, I'm taking a ball from you, young buck. Lapina's like, fool me once. <laughs> You're not getting me again. I know Roy Testa. He's a tough kid. He's been playing with older kids his entire life, so this isn't anything new to him. But you know, certain times when you give it back and when you just take your space and, and move away and, and maintain possession. Yard sale again. Pisano comes away. Oh, unfortunately, that should have been a go. play on. Yeah, Let him go. Should have been a play on for Cold Spring Harbor. That's all right. They, they didn't have an advantage anyway. It was a, it was a four on five, so. It's interesting too, right? Where Timmy Pisano wearing older brother Patrick's same number. Patrick, an All American for Cold Spring Harbor. Currently in the Ivies, playing with Yale. Jesse Phelan, also part of that defensive unit last year for Cold Spring Harbor. He now is at Dartmouth. Testa continues. Testa! Oh, what a save by M. And look at the ride by Cold Spring Harbor. Still loose. And how about that from Dennis Bond? The Wiley veteran calls timeout. We mentioned last year's game. We bring you back there. Another one under the lights here. And it starts off with Jake Rogers going sidearm. 3 0 Cold Spring Harbor early on. Ryan Spielberger goes overhand, extends the lead to 5 1. But Manhasset coming back. There's Dawson Riley, pulls the Indians to within one, five, four, early third. Matt Perfetto, a man up goal. It's now seven, six. But CJ Riley says, go home, everybody. He seals it for the visitors. A big win for Cold Spring Harbor, eight, two, seven. Cold Spring Harbor went on to have an 18 in one season. They won the Class D championship. Beating Chenango Fork 17 to 1. So, what an incredible season for Cold Spring Harbor a year ago. And that's a little bit what we said about in the open, right? That's what you're following up if you're a lot of these guys, some of which are back from the team, a lot of whom are in more advanced roles this year. They were part of that win, though. They know what it takes to win the determination, the discipline but the grit, right? Those plays like right there, rotting that ball back after a great opportunity by Testa to get that ball, now have have possession again to try and score here. So they know what it takes to beat Manhasset and they, they tasted it last year. They know what it feels like. So um, you know, this is, this is gonna be a close game all, all game long. It's gonna be a defensive battle and it's gonna be maybe one of those games of who has the ball last. And both of these communities, you know, they know, they're, they, they know the history that's involved there as uh, Dennis Bond, a fiery competitor, <laughs> getting a smile on his face. But, uh, you know, listen, a lot of these kids, probably older kids followed, but, you know, they knew of the Ian Lavianos and the Matt Lachardis and, and guys before them to have led the Seahawks to championships. A lot of pride in both these teams, but also in these stands. You know, not just parents of, of the players on the field, but people of the community that come and look forward to this game, Cold Spring Harbor versus Manhasset every year. Sammy Bruno. And there's Bauer, the goal scorer for Cold Spring Harbor. He's got Jack Morrison on him. Rounds the cage, him. Makes the save. 
And Flood comes away with the GB. And here come the Indians. It's just the punt return clear by Flood there. He's got some wheels on him. Just picked it up and went with it. Yeah, he certainly does. Shot wide of the mark. Now, but Flood's a guy who's a little bit new to his role this year, but he brings that toughness and he's taking steps, says Keith Cromwell in the weight room, his athleticism. Kind of considers he and Lapina 1 and 1A one at that position at that short stake D midi. Connor to Haggerty. Seaman Hassett runs kind of this set play with a pick and throw back behind. Cold Spring Harbor's been ready for it so far. Here we go, Jack. Looking for Connor inside there a lot of the times. He's such a big target. Colin turns and Kirshner gets up high. The 10th Manhasset. Shots and Kirshner's got five saves. That's Brady McKean, the sophomore. Number six. Part of that second midfield line. And Testa back on. He's getting a lot of run in this first half. You don't bring an eighth grader up to varsity unless you absolutely feel he's going to have an impact. And I think the more he plays with the team this season, the more comfortable he's getting. He's a very strong kid. He's very skilled. So they're going to him for a reason. <laughs> oh, Testa off the pipe. I mean, he's just so persistent. You look at his dodge there. This is an eighth grader sitting on the island, a great spot comfortable with the ball, comfortable with contact, and for him to to be able to, to get to spots in the field where he wants to get to, very impressive. You know, he, he, he's only going to get better, obviously, as he, as he gets older, but to see him have an impact like this at a program like Cold Spring Harbor as an eighth grader, it's great. Slide comes to Riley. And the thing, too, about Testa, right, you, you see him and you're like, wow, this, this kid is small, but he's thick. Right, like he's he's built. Manhasset will call their first timeout. One one with four oh four remaining here in the first half. We mentioned earlier. Let's take a look at the USA Lacrosse part of their top twenty five. Their top ten, some local flavor. There, St. Anthony's at the very top, and there you see Manhasset checking in at number three. Culver from Indiana, number two. St. Anthony's beat them. We've got Brunswick at four. Darian beat them. Manhasset beat Darian, and uh, you see the rest. Fairfield just coming off a big win over Darian as well. I think St. Anthony's is the true number one. I, I really think they've separated themselves at the top. They've played Culver uh, and beat them pretty handedly. Um, they don't play Manhasset, but uh, you know they have really handled, handled every team they've played. And they have incredible talent. I think, you know, 30 college players on that team. So uh, We'll see how the rest of it shakes out. Yeah, and, they, and they've done most of that on the road, which has been remarkable, right? They've gone on the road and beaten uh, Culver and Malvern Prep and others like that. Chaminade early in the season, I think, has been their toughest game so far. Yeah, two goal, two goal win standpoint. for St. Anthony's. We'll see uh, the Friars on Saturday morning. Their coffee and bagel special, 10.30. Darianne makes the trip back out to the island to take on St. Anthony's. Tomorrow we'll be out at Hills and Huntington, and then at Southside, Wanta, Cold Spring Harbor. We'll head or we'll be home for or at Syosset. And then a good one, too. Look at that Saturday stretch. Darien, St. Anthony's, Pequa, Mount Sinai, and then Northport, Connequat to close things out. All of that Saturday right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network.
You and I are back to back this week. Are you on? No, I am. I'm not. I mean, it's only my third game. Just broke my heart of the <laughs> of the week. I'm solo on that game. I got it. No, nah, I think you'll have some help. Here's Riley off the restart. Always interested in what to see what teams bring off a timeout. Here's McGloin. CJ Riley, electric. There's the pass and the finish. And a little shot afterwards as well. No flag. But a goal for Cold Spring Harbor. Let's watch it again. I thought it was McGloin. There you see Riley with the pass. Draws a double. Great job there, finishing in front, knowing that he's going to take a hit. Catches, continues to move his feet. A lot of players you'll see in that situation, they'll catch and they'll fade away or they'll shoot it goal line extended and try and reach around the goalie or put it near side high. He is not afraid to take a hit. He comes, finishes in front. Great shot there. And I think that, that's a little bit too of his, of his, the other sports, right? A football hockey guy also was a short stick D mate the last couple years, so. Um, he's now playing that side of the ball with that physicality. His 11th goal of the year to give Cold Spring Harbor the 2-1 to -one lead. So off another Gerard win. He's taken four of the first five face-offs in this one. Manhasset looking to equalize. Cardula goes the other way. Test for Manhasset is going to be staying patient, you know, down by one, going against his own defense, not to take those poor deep outside shots or low angle shots or jam it into the crease. You really got to be patient and wait for that opportunity because if you work hard enough and you're patient, it, it will open up. There's Connor. Gets it back from shot. Peterson. And goal. How about Matt Cardulo, the UMass commit, stinging it high. Just like that, patient, great ball movement, up top, moving it back and forth. Right, It's almost like they're playing man up because there's no one on them. So when you see this ball movement, right, goes forward, comes right back to him, just like a little, little head fake, oh, so subtle there to get the defense to move that way and just catch and shoot around that defender. Uh, and then you know, even one more, if Colin sneaks up from X there, he could be open as well. So look for them to go back to that set right there as, they, as this game goes on. Cardillo's 15th goal of the year. Connor picks up assist number 11, and we are tied at two with 2.15 left in the first half. Great answer by Manhasset. It felt like Colesman Harbor had the ball for about five minutes, uh, you know, with the ride back and great scoring opportunities. So Manhasset now getting the ball on offense and the opportunity to, to go up here. There's Connor, one and one. So looking at the bottom of the screen, that tells you he's been involved in everything so far in this low scoring game. Peterson gets it back. O'Connor comes out to play Connor. Here comes Haggerty. Bruno on him, back out. Really got to move the ball quick. It's carry, throwbacks, you know, looking one way, back, throw it the next way. Look for the go back to Connor here. This time it's a bouncer by Cardulo. Moments ago, he stung it high. This time, it's a bouncer. 
changing levels, showing different looks, back-to-back -back goals for Matty Cargiulo, and Manhasset has the 3-2 lead. It's just a great shot by Cargiulo. You know, Manhasset being patient, moving the ball, really nothing special here, just assertive on his part. He's like, I'm at 12 yards here. I can get my feet set. I'm catching a good pass here to my stick side. I'm going to put this shot on the ground, make the goalie make a save, putting it on goal. Great job by him and, and two quick answers by Manhasset. Cromwell says he's such a hard worker, kind of fits that UMass persona so well. Good thing I made you give uh, Cold Spring Harbor that face-off. I don't know if they're going to win another one here. <laughs> Gal Gerard just dominating at the face-off X. Manhasset with 46 seconds calls the timeout. And now they'll draw something up here for the, for the end. We showed you the national poll. Let's show you the Long Island poll here by Varsity Media. And there you see Manhasset above Shamana. They will face off, of course, in Riggs Rock. That game at Gold Star Stadium this year. You see Northport undefeated on the season, as is Mount Sinai. This was coming into the week. Bayport just lost at Mount Sinai. Ward Melville, part of that tough Suffolk A. Must be a typo in there. I don't see Smithtown West or Smithtown East on there. Oh, that's not a typo. Oh, what's going on? <laughs> what's going on in Smithtown? But Port Washington makes their way in off that win at Cold Spring Harbor. They're four and two. Cold Spring Harbor could work their way up this chart if, with a win tonight. They certainly can. I see Dennis Bond trying to draw something up here for the final 46 seconds defensively. Reminder as well, you want to hit that subscribe button here on our YouTube channel and also follow Varsity Media on our social media handles. It's at Varsity Media on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And Cromwell said to, listen, coming in, Cold Spring Harbor is extremely well coached and they consistently get teams to play uncomfortable. I mean, that is spot on, as that's what we've seen in this first 24 minutes. That is for sure. So he says that we need to play our style. We need to dominate possessions, which end with great shooting opportunities. So here we go off the timeout. I think the other thing that makes Manhasset so dangerous on this side, Rob, is multiple guys can hurt you here, right? Cargillo had a few. We know what Connor can do. Haggerty as well. And there is Connor. And what an end to this first half for Manhasset. They have turned a deficit now into a two goal lead. Great individual effort by Connor here. He just carries in the middle of the field. I mean, he might have the hardest shot on the field. So if you're Cold Spring Harbor, you have to get a stick on him when he's at 15 yards because at 6'5", with your hands free, stepping into a shot from the middle of the field, right center cage, and he puts it on goal and doesn't hit the goalie, there's a, chance, there's a good chance it's going in. Connor will join his brother Rory at Colgate. Dad Chris was a Maryland captain in 1990. Face-off win for Manhasset. Closing seconds. Open. The skip. Haggerty! <laughs> what a way to end this first half for Manhasset. Starts with Cal Girard popping it forward. He almost picks it up himself, then he gooses it right there to... Peterson, Peterson finding Haggerty on that backside. Just a great heads up play by Peterson. Going to the goal as soon as he picked it up. And Haggerty staying with the play, pushing to the goal, pushing to the backside where there is space and catching and finishing. For Haggerty, his 11th goal of the year. Peterson picks up assist number seven. And the first half ends with a flurry for Manhasset. It's been a slugfest throughout, but we saw more of Manhasset's style of play. 
right at the end. Peterson, Haggerty, bang. 5-2, the lead for Manhasset. It's Cold Spring Harbor and Manhasset all right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. Varsity Media offers live streaming, videography, and photography services for all teams and individuals of all ages. In business since 2010, we are the trusted source when it comes to sports media coverage. If you have a big game that needs to be filmed or live streamed, or an athlete in need of action photography, reach out today and save 15% when you mention this ad. Contact us at 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. Are you a local business looking to advertise? Well, Varsity Media is the perfect place for you. We offer affordable rates both inside our live stream broadcast and through our social media channels. With coverage all over Long Island targeting the 16 to 54 demographic, why not take advantage and advertise today? For pricing and inventory availability, contact us today at 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. Hi, I'm Gene Steratore, CBS Rules Analyst and longtime sports official. For the adults watching this video, you grew up in a world where officials, umpires, and referees for youth sports took their place regularly and reliably ahead of game time. Today, unfortunately, it's getting harder and harder to fill those jobs. Videos showing abusive treatment of officials multiply on social media and there have been consequences for the dreadful behavior of players, fans, and coaches. Massive shortages of officials now lead to games being canceled, and the positive effects of athletic competition are at critical risk for this generation and those to come. I'm hoping we all can begin to see youth competition through a different lens. Today, mistreatment of officials has become normalized, and we are facing an abnormal future where no officials to hire means no games on the schedule. Any call, any decision, any human effect on wins and losses has become subject to not just withering criticism, but physical threats. There's a vicious cycle at work. Fans chase away officials, and there is a smaller pool to draw from, which makes it harder to get quality, well-trained people in position. The entire game suffers. Did you know, according to the National Federation of High Schools, 80% of new officials quit the game after just two seasons because of abusive behavior from the stands and sidelines. This sort of verbal abuse and threatening behavior takes a toll on all officials and makes them leave the game altogether. Did you know from 2018 to 2022, an estimated 50,000 high school referees, roughly 20% have quit. Half of the remaining referee population is at least 50 years old, but young officials are rarely staying more than three years in the job. If the number of officials working contests in all sports doesn't begin to increase, there won't be enough officials to work the games. That means schedules will get cut, teams or even sports might get canceled. In many states, this is already happening. Remember that officials are invested in what they do. Many officials have regular, full-time jobs, and they're sacrificing time away from their families. Try to demonstrate empathy. Put yourself in their position. Think how you would feel about getting yelled at throughout your workday. Yelling and arguing with officials sends the wrong message to young players. According to Play by the Rules Sports Advocacy, it teaches them that it's not okay to make a mistake 
They can blame others for their actions. They can disrespect authority figures. And it's okay to be rude and selfish. You know, officials enforce rules, keep competitions fair, and make player safety a priority, allowing youth sports to be a valuable arena for growth. If we can all just work together and be more empathetic to not just the officials, but everyone else in youth and high school sports, we can then preserve what many of us have embraced about athletics. And you and I know the benefits of sports, right? Let's spread that gratitude and be proud of what we can build and not blind to how it's being torn down. Calling officials cheaters or corrupt, it's not a game. Insulting referees, it's not a game. Threatening officials, it's not a game. Berating young umpires, learning the ropes, it's not a game. Violent language in the stands, it's not a game. Verbal abuse from the sideline, it's not a game. Screaming at a referee in the parking lot, it's not a game. So what happens now? Your response in the heat of the moment is the only thing you totally control, and we have an experiment for you to try. Simply stated, just cheer for your child or the team you're there to support. Move that desire to lash out to a different place and encourage with outrage. Your child's sporting memory should be about how you helped inspire and not about how you caused embarrassment. Now is the time to order a college recruiting video with Varsity Media. College recruiting videos can save thousands of dollars on college tuition and help land a spot on the team. Our videos include your best plays set to music with spot shadowing effects to help you stand out from the competition. Contact Varsity Media today and mention this ad to save 15%. Call 516-403-2050 or email jeff at varsitymedia.net. Are you a local business looking to advertise? Well, Varsity Media is the perfect place for you. We offer affordable rates both inside our live stream broadcast and through our social media channels. With coverage all over Long Island targeting the 16 to 54 demographic, why not take advantage and advertise today? For pricing and inventory availability, contact us today at 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. Varsity Media offers live sportscasts for any event. Our productions include announcers, multiple camera angles, graphics, instant replay, and so much more. Hankinson getting it back. Hankinson going in, dropping it back. The shot of the goal! That's it! That's it! Norton! Norton! Pittsburgh, the Class 8 champions! If you want to enhance your event or make the experience better for your viewers, reach out to Varsity Media today and learn more about our live sportscasts. Contact Varsity Media at 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. Well, back here at Ed Walsh Field, lights are on as the sun is setting here in Manhasset. 5-2, the lead for the Indians at the half. A flurry of goals late in the first half. Dylan Butler, Rob Pinnell with you. And uh, Rob, we take a look at the first half stats and... A lot of things other than, of course, right now the score and the face-offs, uh, pretty even. If you're Cold Spring Harbor, you're feeling really good about yourself with two minutes to go yeah. in that first half. And you, all you do want to do is get in the halftime, 2-2, two, two, even 3-2 going into halftime. But the way Manhasset finished that first half is what you look for in a top team in the country. right? Being down 2-1 tying it up and then extending on that lead in short time. Obviously, it starts with Cal Girard at the faceoff X, Liam Connor on the attack, stepping up in, in most of their goals. So um, great finish from Manhasset. Cole Swing Harbor's got to regroup here a little bit, dial that defense back in, um, and try and get a goal or two here early on and get this game back tight again to give them a, a hope leading into the, uh, into the fourth quarter. Of those goals, two for Connor to go along with an assist. Matt Cargiulo with two as well and assists for Jack Peterson and Patrick Arnold. The Coltrane Harbor goals scored by midfielders Alex Bauer and Ryan McGloin. And here is Rob, part of the way they ended it as Connor just got some space, got his hands free, and finished. I think Coach Baum was very upset with his defense at the end. 
of that first half. And you look at it right there, Connors, their leading scorer, 6'5", is going to step into that shot. It's going to have some heat behind it. And they were late getting to him. And then obviously here, right, you just got to get back in the hole if you're a defender, not watching the ball, just hustle back in. Haggerty beats everybody to that backside and is rewarded for it. Under the lights here at Manhasset. Today's game brought to you by the Manhasset Lacrosse Parents Association. The MLPA wants to thank the Manhasset Lacrosse community for their continued support and generosity, which makes broadcasts like this possible. Now, if you're Cold Spring Harbor, right, we heard from Dennis Bond leading into this game. You know, it's about longer possessions. And for high school kids, right, your natural inclination is let's get this back and, and go faster than you would like to, which obviously that would feed right into what Manhattan wants to do. You know, they're going to have to continue to be patient, pick and choose their spots on offense, go to the right matchups, and they're going to have to capitalize on most of their possessions at this point. They, they can't have a possession go uh, wasted, certainly not with a good scoring opportunity because of that guy right there who's just automatic at the face off X. He will go on and play at Duke, where they've got a really good one from the island doing that right now in Naso. Well, there's nothing wrong with having a two-man unit as well. Cornell right now is operating with a two, three-man unit at times with a couple Long Island guys also. Yeah, Silos, right, and Cascadden, Cascadden as well. You just have Angelo Petrakis up there doing it. You feel like if you're Cold Spring Heart, or really either side, this is a big possession. If you get one right away, now it's a 6-2 game. If you get a stop for Cold Spring, and now you can start to chip away. Yeah, and the, and the larger the league gets for Manhasset, the more they're going to be able to be patient against this zone. And Cold Spring Harbor is, quite frankly, going to have to come out of it because you're going to have to force turnovers, and then we'll see what happens after that. But if they continue to score Manhasset like they do right there, you're not going to be able to sit back in the zone because now the more time Manhasset can take off the clock, and you need the ball if you're at Cold Spring Harbor if you want to get back in this game. Peterson with the goal, his fifth of the year. He give the assist to Haggerty. Watch it again. It's just man up offense right here against his own defense. Catch, step into lanes, try and draw the double team, maybe draw a guy to you, slough the defense in, and then pass it back out to hopefully a step down shooter in Peterson right there. Sounds simple enough, doesn't it? It sounds simple. <laughs> it's, it's certainly that that made it look very easy. Gerard looking for the faux goal goal. Really got to work hard in his own defense, defensively. Got to get out to shooters. And you really got to trust your goalie that he's going to make some of those, those deeper saves. There goes Connor back out. Looks like Cold Spring Harbor's gone into that man defense to try and force a, a little quicker style of play from Manhasset. And I see Bauer all the way out on Peterson at midfield. So looking to shut him off, rounding the cage and finishing was Danny Colon. Great move by Daniel Colon here, He's sophomore. Right, very impressive for a sophomore to be starting at X Attackman on a Manhasset team. He gets the switch off the pick play, has a short stick, and he's got tremendous athleticism. He's very tough. He just gets to his spot, beats him there, and finishes right coming up the field, increases in his angle, and putting it to that far side. Was up on varsity as a freshman. Obviously now with seniors graduating, Colon gets that advanced role and then really paying dividends for him. Ninth goal of the year. Plays with a ton of energy. Keith Cromwell describes him as a pit bull type of player. And he says he loves his speed back there. He's as tough as they get. And, you know, to have a sophomore in one of your most important positions on the field, that's a lot of promise for the next two years, you know, after this one, knowing you have that consistency back there behind the goal. So 7-2. The lead for Manhasset. A flurry 
at the end of the first half and one more. Now for the Indians, they get the ball back. And then it's looking to rinse and repeat. Colson Harbor back into the zone defense, it appears. And has it at this point just really being patient. They have a lead, they can throw the ball around, take their time here. Petroselli cuts across the dunk in front for Connor, his third of the game. And Manhasset has opened things up 8-2, and it's a timeout for Cold Spring Harbor. I'm not even sure if Connor caught this, but it was that set play. He rolls inside, and oh yeah, he catches it and shoots it. It was really quick. It looked, it was so quick, it looked like it just almost bounced off his stick and went in. Manhasset does a really good job off, off ball play there and motion inside and just really patient cut by Connor there. Waits for the guy to come off the screen. He slow plays it and then cuts to that near side pipe where he's open for the catch and finish. Connor's third. And he see it again. He doesn't catch it. <laughs> Misses him and it bounces off him. I didn't think he did. He's a big dude, right? That's There's right. a lot he to still, throw at he there. He still gets the goal. <laughs> the pass had some heat on it, but... Hey, right time, right spot, you get rewarded. He'll eat it for his third, 17th goal of the year. Haggerty's, Haggerty's second assist of this game. We take a look at the upcoming schedule for Cold Spring Harbor, and it's another rivalry game coming up at Syosset under the lights. And then they've got Lindbrook, a tough Wanta team, and then a really tough Southside team as well with uh, another guy and Michael Melconian taking the faceoffs who uh, should win the majority of them. It's surprising in a town like Cold Spring Harbor as histor historic their program is and the talent that they have in the town that they, they haven't been able to find the face-off guy. It's such an important position. Um, so hopefully in the years to come they can, they can solve that problem. Yeah, last year I had a good one and Max Hawkinson and was, was that, was that face-off stay on in the, in the Lachardi mode or mold, I should say. And it's funny, when we spoke with Jeff Braymeyer from Darien, says that's something even up there as Gerard <laughs> wins that one clean. He says it's not even something that they really kind of value, and which is weird, right, to think it, where they don't, they don't have tryouts specific for the face-off position on the, on the younger levels. So if you're a great face-off guy, but you're not maybe a good midfielder, you're not making one of the youth teams at Darien. And he said he's been he's been beating the face-off drum for years, right? And uh, over 600 wins on, on that level, but he hasn't had that guy there either, which is, again, when you think of the incredible talent of players to come out of uh, the Ivanchuks, the Minicuses, and, all, and, all, and so on and so forth, and Darien, it, you've not had that face-off guy. There's a look at Manhasset's. Huddle, let's take a look at their upcoming schedule and they play another Connecticut squad, Ridgefield coming to town. And then it's Island Trees and then the one that everyone asks about every year, right? Did you win the Woodstick Classic? And this year they go to Garden City for that one. Interestingly enough, both teams, the last two editions of the Woodstick won away. Manhasset winning at Garden City a couple of years ago. Joey Terenzi, now at Virginia, had an incredible game in that one. Uh, it was the highest scoring Woodstick. And a year ago here, Stevie Fennell called ball game with the overtime winner. That was a great game here last year. Fennell, Cascadin, Staub, you know, a ton of talent for Garden City. And they, they pulled the, I guess you could say, maybe was an upset at the time for over Manhasset. And then both teams there as well. Different classifications, both going on and winning state championships. So that one is always fun. We look forward to that one as well. That's at Garden City on the 29th. So right now, it seems like everything working for the Indians. Five different goal scorers. 
Colesburg Harbor back in the zone defense here. Manhasset just being patient, taking some time off the clock. Connor just kind of occupying space in front. And there's the finish. Good off ball play here by Colin. Right, he sneaks up from behind the goal and he catches it ready to shoot. Right? One of the worst things you can do in this position is to hesitate. And he catches it, continues to move up the field. And you know, we saw him early on try and go high in that position. Here he switches it up and goes low and, and finds some success there. So that's two for Colin now. Sophomore feeling a little bit here in the second half. And the second assist for Peterson as well. So Colin now with 10 on the season. And Peterson with eight assists. I remember that face-off battle as well, as that one is won by Cold Spring Harbor. It was advantage Girard and a slight advantage against Cascadden a year ago, but obviously Garden City went on and, and won that game. Now a little bit unsettled as Cold Spring off a rare face-off win looked to go quickly. And they've not been on this side of the field really for a very long time. So now you kind of take that chance. Do we have to go fast here? Do we risk giving it back? Or do we take our time here on offense and wait for the best shot? I think you have to be some mix of the two. You don't want to go too fast and go out of control, but you do need to score goals. So McGloin into the crease. Bauer eaten up there. Loose ball. And it's Manhasset who comes away. Theo Lamarca, Lamarca, Jack Lamarca picked it up. The Siena commit. So again, after defending Rob for as long as you did, you've it's, it's such a tough spot for for Garden uh, for uh, Postman Harbor here because you know they haven't scored easily in this game the goals they have you know two goals so to, to try and score seven goals to get back in this game is going to be difficult and you have to take chances but you know that Manhattan's going to get the ball down the other end here and they they have had some success certainly at the end of the second quarter and into this third quarter so uh you know the, the chances that leads only going to to extend is is uh is high Look at this, Petroselli to Haggerty. Haggerty stings it, and Haggerty, his second of the game. Very smooth, Haggerty here, lefty across the middle here, his knee's looking good. And you can see he's kind of just waiting for maybe to someone to come to him, someone to come to him, and no one comes, and as a lefty on the run, I mean, that's his bread and butter right there, putting it to that low, low and away, that low corner on a righty goalie. And as we said, Manhasset is, is certainly finding their groove a little bit here offensively and able to extend that lead to eight. Fast lefty gets those hands free on matchups. Uh, and you feel good for a kid like that because he's put in so much time in PT and rehab and just getting himself back and... You know, it's a little bit of a situation too where Cromwell like you know monitoring him a little bit. We'll have him on attack early, but you know, maybe he, he adds a wrinkle later in the season, moves back to his more natural position in the midfield. Coming out of the box against a short stick right there. He's able to create and when you have the talent that you do on this team, whether he's coming from the attack or the midfield, he's gonna have some success. Defender goes down, Connor. will operate from there. The guy who creates a lot of assisted goals and pressure on defenses was the MVP of the 2022 New York State basketball title game. Tremendous size and athleticism from Liam Connor. He's just kind of waiting now as Petroselli comes back out of the box. And now it's go time. Spins, plays a two-man game at X. Oh, and Kirshner 
got with that one from Cardula. He didn't, he didn't know where that was in the, for the first moment. Yeah, getting a little fancy there for Manhasset. I like the creativity, like the try. I don't know how Coach Cromwell feels about it. But <laughs> you're up by eight. Defense is playing well. Yeah, is that an eight goal take? <laughs> making, play, making plays like that right there and the ride or getting the ball back. I suspect that's not a that's not a three to two take in the fourth quarter. I don't think so. <laughs> so Manhasset, more possession for the number three ranked team in the country. And last year was interesting too because again seventeen and four, but you know there was a there was a point early on where you know there are questions and you weren't sure and is this team going to be able to do anything and you know they just steadied that ship and they got hot and all those games that they lost I think with the exception of the Shaman game they were right there they were in it and obviously went on and beat Mount Sinai a rematch of the previous years. Long Island Championship where Joey Spolina scores the late winner. So that felt good for Manhasset winning it at Hofstra. They had a tough one in the semifinals. It's always hard just to get off the island, which they did. But then a close one and another finish by Cardulo. I think this is just the defense getting tired a little bit here. You look at them just getting a little stagnant on the perimeter inside, just kind of doing a little more ball watching rather than playing the ball. And Connor just patient there, waiting for him to open up on the inside. And Gargiulo finds a little sweet spot inside and catches it and puts it high to low. Third for Cargiulo. Liam Connor with three and two. Now it is Bryce Kipnis in for the faceoff. We've seen him start games there and Gerard takes it and has a go. Cal wants a goal. He quite, really does. Quite frankly, Cal deserves a goal. He does. But it's all right, he's gonna keep winning them, I'm sure. Some special players on last year's Team All-American and Joey Terenzi now at Virginia, Hunter Panzik at Air Force, Matt Perfetto at Cornell, Dawson Riley at Bryant. But you could see, you know, you knew what you had beneath those seniors, and, and these guys are stepping up in a big way. A program like Manhasset, there's always going to be guys underneath them learning from those guys, waiting their turn, and just practicing and improving their lacrosse IQ, improving their skills, ready to take advantage when their time comes. And that's certainly what we have with this team right here. What is it like? I think it's nine unanswered now, right? We were at 2-2. Two, two. It's 2-1. Two, I think it's 10 unanswered. It was 2-1 close from Harvard. Yeah. Donald Mack, we saw there, getting an opportunity, the lefty. Remember his brother Kevin played at Michigan and then Stony Brook. Connor quarterbacking there. I guess I should say the, the point guard, right? More apropos for, for him, that shot wide. <laughs> Quarterback, point guard, yeah, I guess. I like both. I don't think he plays a point guard in the hoops court, though. No. Not with that size. No. Get him in the paint. <laughs> and there's Mac. One minute remaining in the quarter. Colin hands off. And that's the other part of this, too, Rob, that we, we, we've seen it for years, but... You know, we just mentioned the, the last couple of Long Island championships, right? Terenzi and uh, Spolina, and, and now all these guys, right, are on. We see them on 
ESPN Plus and the ACC network and the Big Ten network and, and you know, having big impacts for some of the best teams in the country? Yeah, it's Long Island lacrosse in general. Great players all around Long Island that, given the opportunity in college, they're, they're going to have an impact. Uh, you know, it's a high level of lacrosse on Long, Long Island. They've been competing for a long time. So no surprise to see some of those guys who play for both these teams and teams all over Long Island to have immediate impact. Colin trying to get it to Patrick Arnold. It's picked off. And Cold Spring Harbor goes the other way. It's Theo Torres. And that shot by Bauer off of Riley. So what a response by Manhasset. It has been all Indians here in this second half. And there's one by number 21. One of many goals in this one. Matt Cargiulo has three. And Manhasset with a big lead going into the fourth. You're watching it right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. Varsity Media offers live sportscasts for any event. Our productions include announcers, multiple camera angles, graphics, instant replay, and so much more. Hankinson getting it back. Hankinson going in, dropping it back. The shot of the goal! That's it! That's it! Norton! Norton! Pittsburgh! The Class 8 champions! If you want to enhance your events or make the experience better for your viewers, reach out to Varsity Media today and learn more about our live sportscast. Contact Varsity Media at 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. And there's a look at some of the Long Island championships here for Manhasset. 15 of those. There's 21 Nassau titles and five state championships. First Nassau title back in 1940. 1963, you saw in that banner the first Long Island championship. Talk about a rich history. It doesn't get much richer than what they have here at Manhasset. They got to update it for <laughs> last year. No, yeah, they won state last year, right? They did. I didn't see did it. It wasn't oh, up there? 2019 was the last year they had. All right, so we'll get somebody on that. <laughs> Come on, Manhasset. Maybe there's a ceremony later in the year. Yeah, like they got, they're missing their banner, too. <laughs> 1995, 2004, 2009, 2010 state you're, champion you're, banners. You're killing them. I talked to my Manhasset friends. That's what's <laughs> going on. Fourth quarter, it's all Manhasset. Really, from the final, what, two minutes of the second quarter on, uh, they have taken this game by the scruff of its neck and... Uh, have been in complete control. Which, as you've said, elite teams do, right? Colin gets hit high. It'll be a hold, a 30-second, so Manhasset will get their second men up opportunity after failing to capitalize on their first. Good hard take by Colin here. You know, he's a tough kid. He's a great athlete, but really tough to you. You can see he gets it up around the neck and still almost scores. Great save by Kirshner. Now Manhasset goes man up. Cold Spring Harbor winning this game a year ago, 8-7. to seven. Nice look. There's Colin again, and another really good save by Carson Kirshner. But a failed clear. And the one more, Haggerty. Yeah, he's finishing that. Nice job in the ride here. Roman Hassett starts there, and then the transition goal. Colin to Connor to Haggerty. 
He falls down here, heads up play, moves it forward. One more, very unselfish. The hockey assist for Colin. Connor now at three and three. Haggerty with three and two. Cardulo with three. Colin with two. A lot of different guys involved in the scoring tonight for Manhasset. And listen, we're, we see this huddle, and you know there's frustration in a 10-goal deficit. But if we know anything of Dennis Bond and his history at Cold Spring Harbor, they're going to be just fine. Absolutely. I think right now you're saying to the team, let's finish this game. Let's get better right now. This is an opportunity to play a quality opponent. You can see Coach looking at the roster there. They may be giving some younger guys the opportunity to get into a game like this where they normally might not to gain some big-time experience. Because those are guys that are going to be there at the end of the season uh, and in the years to come. So uh, use this as a, as a learning experience. Use this as an opportunity right now with 10 minutes and 17 seconds left to get better. There's a program with 13 Nassau County titles, first in 1979. They used to play in Suffolk before the move to Nassau. You've got five Long Island championships and the same amount of New York State championships as well. What a great run they had, too. They went 15, 16, and 17 winning state titles, and that's a little bit of what Bond was referencing, right? These guys were those young kids sitting in the stands watching those teams win three consecutive state titles, going undefeated, maybe losing once in a year. So they're not used to staring at a fourth, fourth loss of the year. So, Face-off win. It wasn't Gerard, but it was Tyler Jacoby with the win. Junior, his brother Alex, plays at Amherst. And even he, with limited minutes, winning 61% of his face-offs. One for one tonight. And as you mentioned, we're going to see a lot of different personnel likely here for both in the final nine minutes. Also a, shine, a, a sign of respect, certainly, right, from Cromwell. and Absolutely. Uh, and indirectly, I think both coaches looked at each other and said, you know, let's put some, some other guys out there, let them gain some uh, gain some experience, but also, yeah, you, I mean, Hassett's not going to run the score up here against Goldstone Harbor. It's a traditional, you know, tradition-rich game. It happens every year, so no need to to try and embarrass the other opponent. And even a change in the cage there, James Grego with the save for Cold Spring Harbor and for Kirshner. This is exciting. This is great for the parents to watch their sons play who normally may not be in a Cold Spring Harbor Manhasset game because it's a tighter game. So, you know, it's exciting for the players, but the parents who drive them to practices, sure, uh, you know, put the put the time in all, all their lives as well and come to the games to watch and support the team. Uh, this is great. So, you know, despite the score, what it is, it's great for both teams that some of these players are getting this opportunity to play on a, on a beautiful night on Long Island. It's such a great game. And two, you're rewarding guys probably who, who work their tails off at practice but don't get this kind of opportunity under the lights. Absolutely. So those guys, I mean, they're as important as anybody else or scout team or great save there inside. Probably Alex Robson, or Robson denied at the crease. Yeah, I mean, just like the guys that score the goals, these guys show up to every practice, every weight room, every film session. So you want that opportunity to get out there and reward those guys and let them have some fun. So it's a win for everybody out there on the field right now. I was going to put my charts down because I don't think there's anyone right now who's in or in on my charts. I'm going to well, look at rosters now. Great save by Grego there on a great opportunity for Manhasset at Cold Spring Harbor go. That's Andrew Mazai with it, number 43.
flag on the play. Good size from Mazai, showing a whole bunch of different dodges, right? Went swim, went bull dodge. And he gets the goal as well. Wow, I think everybody was a little confused there. Mazai showing some grit and showing some real talent. You can see he's a real smooth lefty here. I mean, he's just fighting his top side. He's got good footwork. You can see he comes back under here and he just gets high enough. He's just a goal line extended. He throws it in there and somehow squeaks by him and he gets in the goal. Hey, okay, he's just high enough and got it in there. Mazai comes in there with a great move and persistence there on the left side. Exciting moment for him. And if there's anything that we see, apparently regardless of who's out there, <laughs> it's a, a Jacoby showing a little skills there after the faceoff win. It's that Manhasset will win the faceoff. 6.49 left in the fourth. It is all Manhasset. It's Cold Spring Harbor, Manhasset right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for upcoming schedules and content and on social media at Varsity Media. Are you a local business looking to advertise? Well, Varsity Media is the perfect place for you. We offer affordable rates both inside our live stream broadcast and through our social media channels. With coverage all over Long Island targeting the 16 to 54 demographic, why not take advantage and advertise today? For pricing and inventory availability, contact us today at 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. All right, we're taking another look here, Rob, at the banner. So you're right. 2019 was the last one. They did win the state championship in 2022, correct? They did. I, I was there. Okay. We were there. So they're missing the, they're missing, uh, the Long Island championship because they want, you got to win Long Island and win the states. Correct. And they're missing the state championship banner across the way there. Right above that one, you see 2004, 2009, 2010. We've got to add 22. I will talk to my Manhasset friends. There's one of them right there, 2004. Make sure we get this taken care of, show that 22 team the honor that they deserve. But how do you know they're not gonna have a ceremony? They very well could be. See? But so you're killing them. Maybe you wanna maybe, get it maybe done. Maybe they can have a special evening. Maybe you wanna get it done with in the you know, beginning of the season so it's not a distraction later on. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be up there after this video. <laughs> Ceremony, 10 a.m. tomorrow. There's Luca Petroselli. Cold Spring Harbor just working on doubling the ball here, maybe trying to cause a turnover. Um, actually, no, Cold Spring Harbor is man up, so they have an extra guy with the penalty that happened down here. So they're just trying to take some time off the clock. Cold Spring Harbor trying to force a turnover. Cole Purcell. It's been all in Manhasset for a while now. Really good response. For some early difficulties, there's C.J. D'Angelo. Good look there at Luca Petroselli. Guy who's just kind of coming into his own this year. Soccer player, so fast in open spaces. And Cromwell said, we're just trying to get to use him more to his advantage and create some mismatches for us. The figures five here will just continue to get better as the season goes along. And there's Arnold, another lefty, another basketball guy. 
Cromwell calls him a next phase guy. Loved him in the fall. Guy just kind of getting used to the physicality and the dodging needed at the varsity level. Arnold Smooth, you can tell he's not phased by checks, handles pressure well, he moves well. More bloodlines there as well. Brother Edward plays at UPenn, 19, or excuse me, 2019 graduate of Manhasset. Nice hustle and ground ball by Purcell. Failed clearance. Look out, split dodge and the goal. Mack attack, Donald Mack with the finish. Impressive by Mack here. Comes up with it in the rye, but just splits the double team. I'll be honest, if I was him in this situation, I might have just pulled it out, but he picks it up here. He's got two guys coming at him and he just splits the double right in between, comes through it and finishes in front. Great. Great play by him. Mack, a guy, played a lot of man up for Manhasset a year ago. Lefty's going to get some spot runs on that left side. His third goal of the year. 13-3. And Gia Kobe, another win. And you gotta think too, right? Just even going head to head every day with Cal Gerard, you just get better. Yeah, it's amazing to go against a guy like that. And I'm sure Cal is teaching him things and getting him ready for, for next year when, when he's not here. So Yeah, he'll be the guy next year. That's what makes you better. You know, whether you're a face off guy going against another face off guy or one of these attack men going against one of these great defenders every day in practice, that's that's where you put the work in, that's where you really get better to showcase it in games like these, but that's where the work gets put in. A lot of different personnel now getting looks inside the final three minutes. Manhasset will improve to 7-0 and on the season. I mentioned before, Ridgefield coming to town. Nice save by Grego. Good, good take by Purcell there. That had some heat on it. I see Grego too, just a little a different look, right? Fills the cage a little more than Kirshner, but gets down pretty well. Has to just again content to work it around, and it's interesting too, right? Because if you're if you're one of these guys coming off the bench, Robin, we mentioned you know like you get your opportunity to shine, like you kind of want to pot one, right? But you also Absolutely. understand <laughs> the situation. And these guys are all talented players. They've been playing lacrosse. They they know how to play. <laughs> take advantage of the opportunity. You know, take a shot. There you go, just like that. D'Angelo, right? What do you have to lose? You're in a game, get an opportunity, get your hands free. He looks like he was a little tired <laughs> running around. <laughs> he just shot it, and he was rewarded. Scored a goal there. Awesome job. All right, he makes a move here. Kind of just has his hands free. He just pulls the trigger, right? Great shot, great placement. And that's one, too, where you mentioned, you referenced it earlier in the game. Like, a lot of guys in that position will try to maybe go low to high, right? But there, right, picked the spot, went low. And put it on cage, make the goalie, make a save. Another face-off win and possession for Manhasset as we are inside the final minutes. 
Remarkable to think. Feels like it was seven hours ago that it was Cold Spring Harbor with a 2-1 lead. Manhasset, three goals inside I think the final minute and a half of the first half and really never looked back at that point. Scored one early in the third quarter and kind of put this one in cruise control. Yeah, they really set the tone the way they finished that second quarter. One more. Purcell. Purcell had a nice take. First time he came in, go and Grego made a great save. And he goes right back to it. And he's got some speed on this shot. Down the run, he's a big boy. He puts that to a good spot. And that would that makes it running time, but obviously that also means the end. So Manhasset. A 15 to 3 win over Cold Spring Harbor and Rob. I mean, they are just like even you go back to that Darien game. It's it's a it's a rivalry that's usually one goal, two goal difference, and uh, they beat Darien uh, in a big way in that one. Again, it was a team they lost to a year ago, uh, but a huge win uh, over them this year. 11-2. They beat Mercer Island 12-5. Like. A lot of these games aren't close. I think you look at Manhasset, it says so much about their talent and their depth. I don't think this says anything less about Cold Spring Harbor. Yes, they are a team figuring it out, uh, battling through some injuries and figuring out the right spots for some guys. But Manhasset is a team that has experience. They have Cal Girard at the faceoff X, and they've got offensive firepower that's going to put the ball in the goal after he gets them the ball. So. Um, I think a lot of people thought Manhasset would win this game tonight. I think it was a little closer than we thought in the first half. Sure enough, Manhasset was able to pull away and and win in the fashion that they did. Yeah, again, some of the leading scorers, Liam Connor, Aiden Haggerty, and Matt Cargiulo with three goals each. Danny Colon had two. And those were your starters. And then you, some of the subs came in there as well. 15-3, the final. Let's take a look before we... Leave you here tonight with some of the upcoming games, and it's a busy week on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Ten games that we have in total from Monday to Saturday. It continues with John Perez, not solo Rob Pinnell. John Can't wait Perez to be on, on the, the call, call with John Perez, my man. And Mike Hunger for the three-man crew. We're going to have a great time. Big one, Huntington at Hills. And then Southside, Wanta, Cold Spring Harbor, Syosset, both on Friday. And then the Blue Wave heading to South Huntington to face the number one ranked team in the country. St. Anthony's, a rare home game for the Friars. And then Piqua going out to Mount Sinai. Should be a fun one there too. And we close things out on a busy week with a Suffolk A showdown as the two-time defending Long Island champs of Northport go to the bird's nest to take on the T-Birds of Connecticut. It's an action-packed Saturday right there. Yeah, I'm on two of those, by the way. Double header. Who's better than you? <laughs> well, we'll show you some guys who are better maybe than me. Let's take a look at uh, some of the guys here on the call as we uh, leave you here tonight. Our executive producer, Ben Turchin. Our technical director is Chris Sweeney. It's Ron Pierre, Travis DeLuise bringing you all those moving images. For my broadcast partner, Rob Pinnell, Dylan Butler, thanking you for joining us from Ed Walsh Field. And we'll see you next time on the Varsity Media Sports Network.